Pachin, welcome to Profile. Thank you very much. Happy to be here on Profile. We're, we're happy to have you as well. I mean, this is literally the history of Jamaican music. Uh, you're the co-founder of the world's largest reggae music label, um, VP Records, based in the United States. And the list, I have to be looking down at my cell phone where I made the list, because the list of people who have been under your label literally reads like a who's who of Jamaican music. So you're talking about Bojo Banton, Bounty Killer. I could not write down everybody. Admiral Bailey, Grez Gregory Isaacs, Shaggy, Shabba Rang, Stanya Stevens, Tony Rebel, Lady Saw, Luciano, we we're continuing. Tiger, Beris Hammond, Spice, Jan 9, Busy Signal, you name them, they have probably um, been on your label. How do you feel when you hear all of these names and you think of the role that VP Records has had in sort of transforming and making Jamaican music a worldwide name? I feel very proud to be here 60 years, continue to do the same for the artists and the producers and how to really showcase them abroad. Um, it just come naturally because I'm a born Jamaican and um, talking to Jamaican every day of my life with my family, my son Chris and the whole family. We were all born in Jamaica. So it becomes naturally to us and um, meeting you know, meeting the artists and talking to them and seeing them perform, it's a beautiful feeling to see them grow and develop and give them wings to fly. You've been doing, as you said, this for a really, really long time. Started yes. back in Kingston yes. before Jamaica was independent, I believe yes, I, 1958. 1958. Yes. Why music? What, what was it about? <laughs> My husband used to work with a jukebox company and he used to go around the island, change the jukeboxes, the little 45 records. I guess the jukebox was a machine that has been placed in the bars, the restaurant, the clubs. And you could it, select whatever. And they could doing. put a 10 cent and select five records of their choice. But at that time, we didn't have them. We only had R&B and American records in the jukebox. No Jamaican records. And I see how excited and happy the people came when he was changing the jukebox. I was then a nurse, and then I went in business with my husband. After a time, we had so much rejects from the jukebox, so we decided to buy them out from the company and started at East Street, 18 East Street, selling old jukebox records. And that's how it started. We did so well that we went to 70 North Parade and rented a small store inside of a restaurant. This was the heart of downtown Kingston. The Still heart, is the of, heart down, of downtown. Yes, it is. is. Be before, before you met your, your husband, did, did you always have this love for music? I had a love for community. And how can I make it? My mother and my dad, my mom is Chinese and my father is East Indian. Mm -hmm. So as children, we came from a very, very poor family. And um, we always instilled, my parents always instilled to give back and community. And um, when I see the opportunity where I could start a store and make a studio where they, we have artists come and sing and to showcase their talent, that was really what brought my husband and myself to start the business and build a studio in the early 60s. This was Studio 17? Studio 17. So it started out first with the record mart. Yes. And then moved on to the, to the studio itself. Yes. And this was a studio in the heart of downtown Kingston, was still the heart of downtown Kingston. Yes. And as a consequence, a lot of people passing through. Yes. Who are some of the names who are passing through? Well, you have young Bob Morley, Lee Perry, Israel Vibration, Augustus Pablo, the Whalers, many, many young, Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaac, young, they were only 16, 17. And um, they would stand outside the sidewalk from we open at nine, together with sound system people, 
and also record fans. And who, who is who? Anyone, anyone you want to know where they are, you come right there. There was a little area between the record store and Chancel Lane, and there they called Agler's Rest. And that's where you have all the record fans, people buying records from England. And the studio was right there. So if the musicians want somebody downstairs as a backup singer, or a guitarist, or any person to help in, in their recording, they would just call downstairs and um, get a job. So, so it was an exciting time. So, so the movement to the studio was just sort of natural because of what was taking place yes, in the space? in the space. Yes, so it was the retail store downstairs, and then the studio was upstairs on the other building. So from we open in the morning, nine o'clock, they would have a, a gathering of people, musician, artists, producers, buyers, sellers, just hanging out. And that's why they really called it. I don't remember when it started, but the name of it is Igla's Rest. They would just come there to listen to music and just to see who was hot and which producer came to rent the studio. Were, were people making songs and coming there or they were also coming there to sort of experiment? They, they, come, they come to produce and just to hang out to hear what's going on in the music industry. And a uh, lot of excitement. It was like a spot where everybody would know, anybody who wants to know in the music business, you'll come right there. This was a particular time for Jamaica as well. As you said, most of the music that we were seeing, certainly when you talk about the jukebox um, company, um, was this was American music. Um, this was like, like, like R&B. Yes. What was Jamaican music like? Because this was the sort of beginning of a, of a Jamaican music industry. Well, we usually have like, um, what do you call it? Like what um, Bim and Bam would, would play and Mentos. I remember Chin's Rainy Service down Orange Street. He used to do Mentos. Then from Mentos, it turned into ska, a faster type of music. And it changes to rock steady. And the history is that drum and bass, lovers rock, then it turns into dance hall. As the year progress, the music progresses in different ways. The dancing as well as the title of the, the era that we are in. So it really started from Mento, then the ska, then rock steady. Then you have lovers rock, and then you have drum and bass, roots music, and then now we have a dance hall. In, in that sort of sense, you became a student of music by actually doing, not just a student, but an expert at music, by actually doing it. And I want to talk a little bit about that because that comes with its own challenges. You know, people's impression of you, people's impression of you as a woman in an industry that was considered to be sort of dominated by men. But we have to take our first break on profile. So we're going to do that right now. I'm talking to Pat Chin, the co-founder of VP Records, and we're back after these messages.